Hey guys, it's Kyle Lawrence, founder at The Smile Life. Today I had the opportunity to interview Olympian and professional surfer Kaylee Gilchrist. Yeah, so we went to high school together, we surfed together, we both went to college, played sports, both won a national championship, and then you decided to take it to the next level and go to the Olympics, which is crazy. Um, tell us a little bit about that experience and just that progression from college to yeah, I mean, for me, kind of my progression, I was, I got asked to train with the national team 2013. So that was going into my senior year. And I actually had surf contests scheduled for that summer. So I told the head coach of the national team, Adam Krikorian, it's like, look, um, I don't think I can commit this summer. Like, I hope to get a second invite back in the fall of 2013. And at that moment, looking back on it now, I just laugh at myself. But that moment, I was willing to give up that Olympic dream to kind of pursue my surfing career because the goal was go to college, win a natty, then go become a professional surfer. But once I kind of uh, took time to kind of reflect and realize what was going on and the amplitude of the situation, I was like, what am I doing? So I got that, luckily I got that second invite back the fall and kind of, I just pushed my commitment level to another, kind of whole another degree and just fully committed on this goal of becoming an Olympic champion. Um, you know, I've always, the Olympics have always been a part of my family. You know, I have my aunt, uncle, dad all swam at two Olympics. So I think deep down inside, I knew since I was, you know, a young kid, a little grom at like 10 that I dreamt of going to the Olympics, but to kind of see how my journey went and progressed and how it kind of all came together at the right time and with the right people, it was, uh, you know, it's a dream come true. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, obviously with taking that next step, there's obviously a lot of fear with like, hey, how am I gonna balance this schedule? Like. Am I going to see my family, my friends? Like, with that in mind, like, what do you do to, like, stay energized and still feel, like, satisfied with your lifestyle? Yeah, for me, I mean, we, I've had a crazy lifestyle, you know, since I can remember. So yeah. it's almost to the norm for me and just being able to balance and the time management. But obviously, as I'm going to this high level, the highest level of water polo, I had to kind of reevaluate and refocus and of course for me jumping in the water whether it's swimming some laps or getting a quick surf which is kind of funny because that is my job but that kind of refreshes me and also uh, I journal like every day about kind of anything whether it's water polo statistics coaches comments how the waves were how I was surfing quotes goals you know kind of journal about it all and I think it's a good way to kind of you know, reflect and realize how fortunate I am kind of to live the life I do and be able to do what I do, but also to be self-critical and kind of keep myself accountable for the goals and where I kind of want to see myself go in the future. So I think journaling has been huge in kind of my development as a person and as an athlete. Yeah. Um, kind of going off like what you were saying with just like being fortunate with what you've like been giving you and like your travels and just your experiences. Is, is there something like specific that like always no matter what you experience or see like it just makes you smile inside um i mean yeah the list the list could be super long yeah. but i'll try to keep it small um smiling obviously the sports i play make me smile you know yeah. surfing and water polo um being united hugging friends and family after a long time away being at the airport and seeing kind of strangers be able to hug each other hug you know seeing their loved ones uh being able to make an epic connection with a teammate everything about surfing kind of um, from, you know, the actual act of surfing and riding the wave to the smell of new weddies and a new board. Um, being able to carry on that Gilchrist Olympic legacy that I was talking about, uh, hearing the national anthem. I always get really emotional hearing that. Um, I don't know, whenever somebody kind of comes and tells me that I've inspired them or motivated them in a, one way or another, whether it's kind of a stranger or, you know, friends or family and um, corgis. <laughs> Corgis. Um, yeah, no, that's awesome. Um, I, I know personally following you and just being like your friend, you definitely put an emphasis on just making time for friends. Um, how important are like deep friendships for you as you move through your career? Yeah, I mean, they're huge for me and I, I put a lot of effort and time in them and I hope my friends and the relationships I have, people understand that. and. Uh, for me, like I've saved every nice text, email, voicemail, letter, birthday card I've ever received in, you know, in the past 10 years just because it kind of makes me smile. And when I'm having a tough time to be motivated, I look back and you know, that kind of re-motivates me and refreshes me and kind of makes me realize why I'm doing the things I do. And I understand that my life as a professional athlete, it's, it's a very short window and I'm gonna have to hang up the cap for water polo and hang up the wetty, 
you know, from competition sooner than later. And there's going to be life after sports, but I know my friends are going to be there, you know, after that time. Yeah. Um, and then kind of just piggybacking when we're talking about friends. Um, I know like for the Olympics, you had a massive fan group down there, which is awesome to see. Um, and I'm sure you saw a lot of smiles on their faces, but what does it mean when you see like a friend or a fan just like give you the biggest smile for something like you've done? I mean, I guess it kind of means I'm doing something right. right. And it's kind of what it's all about. Um, you could take away all the different achievements and accolades. And if I'm still able to kind of spread the stoke and the passion through, you know, the passion I have through my sports and kind of life and be able to inspire somebody, whether it's a friend or family, then I think that's kind of the real definition of success. And, you know, I hope all my friends know that they are a part of this journey as much as I am. And I wouldn't be where I am today without all of them. I guess my last question would be like, if you were to give like a youngster, just a friend or a fan, like advice on like, maybe one thing you could do every day to just kind of keep yourself uh, energized and healthy on the inside, what would it be? Um, I guess kind of to follow your passions, like make sure you know you're doing what you love and uh, then it makes work not work and you make you know life much more enjoyable. I kind of have five core values that I keep to and it took me a while to kind of figure them out, but it's passion, then it's industry to be the hardest worker, inspire, you know, inspire generation, whether it's the older generation or younger generation. Um, and then it's gratitude, being grateful for the opportunities I have and kind of life I live and the friends I have. And then uh, my last one, but not least, is optimism. Be optimistic and be kind of the half glass full kind of girl. And, uh, you know, but it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Like I'm making it right. sound so simple, but I've gone through plenty of, plenty of uh, tough times and setbacks. But I think um, just being courageous to overcome those setbacks and reach kind of go through the valleys to reach the peaks it kind of makes that success much more fulfilling and worthwhile so kind of went on a rant but passion and overcoming setbacks